A beautiful morning. Welcome to Good Morning Africa Show on Housing TV Africa. Now we have a lot in store for you today talking about the current issues facing the housing sector in Nigeria and the world at large. Now what are those challenging issues facing the housing sector? Your guess is as good as mine. Now quickly, let's keep you informed on some of these matters. On the show this morning, we'll be looking at Nigerians' worst flooding in decades that has left thousands trapped and homeless in Borono State. And later on the show, a town planner will be joining us in the studio to discuss proper planning measures and solutions to mitigate flooding in major cities. Also, a special report on health challenges and possible solutions of overcrowded homes. I urge you to sit tight. These and more will be coming your way after this short break. I am Imuna Bagudu. We'll be back shortly. A very warm, sunshiny, promising, excellent, delicious, confident good morning to all our viewers out there. I trust you all slept well and I'm here again to talk to you about something that's very, very precious and I want to talk about value. V-A-L-U-E, value. Now, just walk along with me for a second, right? Let's say a bottle of water costs 200 naira in the market and you go to a hotel and the cost is 500 naira and probably go to the airport and it's probably 700 naira. Now you would wonder, it's the same content, it's the same size, but why the difference in price? You know what? It is the value that has been placed on that environment over time that has given it that stamp of approval to place such amount of value on its products or content as it were. Now, let's bring that closer to home, okay? You, as a human being, full of versatility, full of ideas, full of so much beauty and worth. Just imagine how much value you place on yourself. And guess what? There's no price tag to that. It is priceless. So if you place a certain amount of value on yourself, within your giving, geographical location within your environment within your immediate space that is how much people around you will value you so whatever you put in is what you're going to give out after all there's a computer terminology garbage in garbage out g-i-g-o and if you spend your time Put it in what matters. When you meet other people, you're networking or you're chit-chatting with friends or family or strangers, it won't take long before they know where to place you, okay? Because the average human being knows what to say, knows when to say what he or she says. And trust me, as human beings, we're probably 70-80% intentional about what we say, what we do. If you actually place value on value, if you place worth on worth, you'll tread the path of making yourself a better person. Remember what I said about the water bottle? Still the same size, still the same content, but the price goes higher and higher depending on where the bottle is placed or sold. So when the time comes for you to display yourself, probably in front of an audience, in front of a committee, in front of a program, 
wherever that is. People sitting and watching and listening to you, what is that value they're going to place on you? It is vital. It is important that we take our time to groom ourselves so that we can have a long lasting impression that is valuable, that matters in the long run. We need to build ourselves. We need to surround ourselves with things and people that matter. Because in the long run, you matter. I matter. In the long run, people desire value around them. There are a lot of people walking around clueless. They don't know what to make of themselves. But here you are taking out time to pour into yourself. Taking out time to better yourself. Taking out time to place value on yourself. Priceless value. It could come with a price tag sometimes. Before you misunderstand, this is what I mean. For instance, if you're a public speaker, if you're a master of ceremony, definitely you need to be paid for the job. Okay? So, it depends on how much you prepare yourself. That could also determine the negotiation brought to the table. I just want to encourage us. What time do you spend? What amount of time do you spend in putting into yourself things that really count and things that really matter? So that at the end of the day, you showcase yourself and people are like, wow, no wonder he isolated himself for so long. No wonder she isolated herself for so long. Because if you want to place value and worth on yourself, you need to be willing to take out time and set yourself apart to build your inner man, to build yourself. And that way, people will be willing to identify with you. What are you going to do with this piece of information given to you this morning? I just want to say, place value on yourself. We can never regret it. Until next time, keep on winning. Bye. This is Housing TV Africa on YouTube and click on the subscribe button. Subscribe to Housing TV Africa to stay updated on latest happenings in Nigeria's housing sector. Follow our social media pages, like and share our posts on Facebook, Housing TV Africa, on Twitter, Housing TV Africa, Instagram, Housing TV Africa. Join the conversation and keep up with latest housing updates. Welcome back. Now, to begin the show this morning, Nigerians' housing deficit and the unavailability of affordable housing has caused many of Nigerians to live in overcrowded homes. And this situation has an effect on their health and well-being. Let's take a look at this special report. Nigeria's housing deficit is a pressing issue that has resulted in overcrowding across different parts of the country. According to recent estimates, the West African country needs approximately 28 million housing units to meet the demand of its rapidly growing population. The shortfall has led to a variety of problems including overcrowding, slum development and increased vulnerability in Abuja, Lagos, Niger, Borno State among others. I depended on how many family, how many uh, persons in a family. Like Nigeria, we know that we extended families are much. You have your mother's side, your father's side, you know, friends are well wishers that you, you, it's inevitable. <laughs> the health challenge is so much. It's so much. I will not start mentioning so many of them. It's so much. Ah, the few of them is uh, the present situation, the economy, and how to feed. Before, if you're a family of four, you can feed subsequently. 
goodly two meal in a day, but now hardly you can feed one square meal. So when you have that kind of crowd, how can you feed with a minimum of 75,000 or 70,000 as your salary? And that is not even implemented. So what do you think about that? My own opinion to the government for opinion houses is to look inward and sit down in the right table, dialogue on it, how to help the masses. How they help the people they are governing. Because if your people you are governing are not comfortable and not free. So what are you who are you governing? Are you governing the grass? Are you governing the best of the air? We are governing human beings. So what we are trying to let them know they should make everything affordable for us so that we can help them too. So that their reign will be supreme. The number of people that should stay in a room, yes. depending on how big the room is, but ideally it should be two to three. It's easy for any communicable disease to spread. For instance, if I'm coughing and the person sitting beside me is coughing, I won't be surprised if I see him coughing the next day. I think proper hygiene, if the environment is clean enough, and once, if I'm staying here with the, in a room with my neighbor and I notice that there's something, I will either go to get myself protected or I will advise him to go and treat himself. Some servers are up to 10 in a one room, like girls. If you even go to town, yes, self, it's not even like you see the way they will be arranged yourself. Some again, mm, seven, some five, some eight. It depends on how big the room is. Honestly, they are facing a lot. I have some, some of them. Because, like some of them, they, even that amount they are spending in that room, they do pay. Not that they are staying there free. They are paying. Honestly, they are paying. Because I pay maybe weekly, monthly, you understand. So they do pay. And there's some of them are facing back pain uncomfortable you know stealing of uh, property of each other you know all those things because it's not your personal house you are like four eight ten inside one room so anything can happen fighting and all that thing so they are not finding it easy they are just staying there because they don't have any option they don't even know where to stay and they don't even have anybody to accommodate them and even though you have a relative here they will tell you that ah please I don't, i'm sorry i can't keep you you know one or two things and feeding and also all that thing that is one of the issues. So they are just managing their life on the name of I want to work and survive. That is how they do stay. But you that you have your own house. If you want to accommodate a person like me now, I can't accommodate two of two, two weeks in my house. It can't be possible. I tried now. At least if I try, maybe one week. And you are working. And if you check how much is house inside town, one million, five hundred thousand, six hundred thousand. Who are for that much is the salary? Ah yes, if you even see my one one fifty, if somebody is not even up to one fifty. So how can you use that? That is what many workers now, some of them, what they are even doing is shock of mouth because they can't even use their salary to do anything for themselves. Let's be honest ourselves. And the government is also aware of it. That is the truth. He's even aware of it, that people are suffering. So let him help us. We don't even need to shout or we don't even need to tell him. He himself, he knows that people are suffering. So the solution is let the government help the youths. That is the only solution. Either you transfer money to each youth account. And they have collected our account number for how many months now? We have not seen the money. Some people say they see 50,000, but me, till today, how many months? This one year now, I have not even seen that money up to today. So they should just help. That is the truth. Even me, I'm here. I'm even looking for help, Seth. So everybody's looking for help. If the government can even help me, say, I'm looking for help. I'm even looking for money, say, to even rent a house. Because where I'm staying, say, it's not even comfortable for me. Let's just do something about it. Overcrowding is not that good because some people have some health issues. Like, I can, let me just say, for example, I'm sleeping with somebody on a bed and he has an infection. Now, and then let's say we have plenty of people with infection and plenty of people with that infection in a room that is overcrowded it can be um how would i put it spread to the others which makes it very very bad now the way to tackle this is to have more of the rooms then let everybody have their spaces like three to four is not that bad in a room according to the world bank and local housing surveys Nigeria faces a staggering housing deficit of over 20 million units, driven by rapid urbanization and population growth. The challenge is compounded by high upfront costs, inflexible payment terms and inadequate financing options, making it increasingly difficult to secure a sustainable apartment or home in today's competitive market. The rising cost of living Limited housing supply and strict rental requirements makes it increasingly difficult for many individuals and families to find affordable homes. Um, so many people around the house, so there's no space around them for them to do their personal things or 
for them to get their personal vibes. So it's all, when you talk about overcrowded, you know everybody's always disturbed. Uh, it should be more than two. Yeah, we have like 80% of Nigerians that don't have houses. We just stay on the streets, like in the morning we wake up high, we stay in clubs or we stay in gardens or things like that. So there's no housing, there's no housing around in Abuja. Housing is so expensive and lack of funds, like even in a suburb area like this, you can't get a very good house. So that's just a problem. Um, it's like 250, 300 for a single room. The government, uh, they can't do anything because even though they provide houses, the houses are for the elites. Yeah, they give the houses to the elite, so the common man, there is no, like, um, let me say, there is no hope for the common man. So that's how it is. Uh, some na born now. Like this house, they, they born four children. Four, they, they marry four wife. You go see children like 30. Everybody, they go hozu, come back. You understand? Mm -hmm. Like my father now, he born us 10. So if house no day, <laughs> if house no day, now I wanna go crowd and sleep for the same house. But if you get money, uh, free wall, you feel beautiful flat. Everybody get your own house. Everybody there you own how you go do. Like me now, if we plenty, if I get money, I feel rent house for another people. Well, let us divide ourselves. Government, they're supposed to look on that. Look how poor they suffer. Because if, if they say money day, they're not go jump pack inside one room. So let government look this thing and help the poor. Actually, overcrowding in a room is when a number that is a number that is not being expected is being in a one particular room. For, for me, uh, a number of a particular room should be like two people. Two people will be okay. If it is more than two people, then uh, it may lead to another thing, like to contact a disease. Uh, the room will be always overheating. Um, there, it will be always dirty or uh, somehow. So for me, uh, if you can contain like two people because of the condition of things today uh, many people are managing as uh, somebody that uh, are not doing anything you you see they are managing people we like to people will like to conject themselves into one room because they cannot be able to pay for a particular house of a room because house of a room now is very costly in Abuja here uh, talking about they cannot pay for a, a room. So you see many people are being fixed themselves in one particular house. The government can come in by reducing the price or the cost of building so that the house, the house owners in Abuja here can be able to collect a low rentage from their tenants. Overcrowding basically just as uh, it, the literal meaning implies, it means when, when more than a particular number that is supposed to, to stay in a particular place, it's, it's more. It's more. Ideally, ideally for, for grown persons, it's supposed to be one person to, to an apartment. Then if it's a family, if the family is set in, even in a, in a civilized society, you see uh, you see husband and wife staying under the same roof in different rooms. First, first, what we look at we look at uh, infection and uh, we look at uh, all this uh, communicable disease and maybe uh, in terms of health, mentally. It can be stopped too. Uh, basically, there are, there's supposed to be there, there is solution if the government and uh, the private sector, if if they take it serious, like building affordable affordable homes, we are those that are working can uh, can come in, get a house, and pay over time, like instrumentally. 
Okay, overcrowding basically is when you have more people in a housing facility than there is supposed to be. Okay, if somebody is supposed to be occupying a self-contained facility, housing unit, and you have three people there, that is overcrowding, evidently. So, um, basically it's just having excess of persons in a facility. A self con now, honestly speaking, as the name implies, self con, self contained, one person. It shouldn't be more than one because two is company, three is a crowd. It's the economy now. You can't, you see, this is, this is not something we should even deliberate on. It's the economy. Basically, it, it is the economy. The economy has made, it's just funny though, but the economy, basically, people are trying to, you understand, meet up. Obviously, there are a lot of solutions to this problem. The first major solution to this problem is there's a need for urban outskirts to be developed. If their house is built in Abaji, people don't want, everybody wants to be in town, but everybody cannot be in town. Do you get it? Everybody cannot be in town. Okay. So there has to be provisions for housing units outside of town, in quote. Outside of town. So there has to be housing provisions for housing units outside of town. So outside of town. It, yes. People should go, they should explore more places. The houses in Guaguadada, the houses in Abaji, the houses in Kuali, the houses on Shuleja Road. I mean, there are, there are places eh, that if they are being developed, I don't think people will be complaining of houses. We are narrowing it down to FCT Abuja. Do you get me? So, if this 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 this, if this step can be taken by the appropriate authorities, whoever they are, I think they would decrowd. Other factors, including redevelopment and economic instability, have also contributed to the challenges faced by prospective tenants and homeowners. However, despite these challenges, the demand for housing is still on the rise. This is Housing TV Africa on YouTube and click on the subscribe button. Subscribe to Housing TV Africa to stay updated on latest happenings in Nigeria's housing sector. Follow our social media pages, like and share our posts on Facebook, Housing TV Africa, on Twitter, Housing TV Africa, Instagram, Housing TV Africa. Hmm, indeed, health and a proper shelter is needed to carry on your daily activities. Now let's move to our focus for today on the Good Morning Africa show. Flood menace in Nigeria have become a normal and reoccurring phenomena which sometimes has devastating impact on human livelihoods and infrastructural development. Causes of this problem such as rapid population growth, poor governance, poor drainage facilities, lack of proper environmental planning and management strategies, poor practice of dumping waste and climate change, coupled with inadequate preparedness, bringing us to our discussion segment on the Good Morning Africa show. Now, a town planner is with me in the studio to have this conversation today on proper planning measures and solutions to mitigate flooding in major cities. Get credible and authentic housing news at your fingertips by downloading the Housing TV mobile app. You can also join the African International Housing Show live from across the globe through the Housing TV mobile app. The mobile app features live streaming and trending housing news. You can locate the AIHS venue via the app. Let's work with AIHS season speakers and live chat with exhibitors. 
You can also order house or building materials at AIHS via this app. Download the Housing TV mobile app now from the App Store and Google Play Store. And don't forget to click on the notification button. Available for both iOS and Android users. Housing TV is also on Star Times Channel 149 Decoder. So the conversation is beginning to start. My guest is present with me here in the studio. We have town planner Mayro Denladi, FNITP. You're highly welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. So the topic we'll be looking at is flood control. Okay, we want to see how proper planning measures and um, solutions um what are the things that we need to put in place you know to mitigate flooding now we're going to start off with um this year because in various states they have been affected with flooding with yes. borno state on the list yes. for the past um one week now going to two weeks it's been borno Meduguri, flood you know and all of that so first things first let us you know talk about the causes of flooding okay so thank you very much um, flooding is not caused by one, one factor. It's usually a combination of factors ranging from climate change, increase in rainfall. That's the most natural. Rainfall increases, it comes very hard, very fast, and it causes um, like dams or rivers mm. or natural water bodies to overspill their bounds into where development is. Okay. okay? We also have issues of um, blocked drainages and water passages by development. Housing that we build in the water path, housing that we build in areas that are not supposed to be built. Deforestation, removing ground cover. Ground cover helps to break the force of water when it is coming no matter how strong it is and it also helps water saturation into the soil to reduce flooding but a combination of these factors now overwhelms the environment and then flooding occurs and flooding is so it's so impactful it's damaging infrastructure loss of lives loss of, of ground cover because it moves soil at a massive, massive rate. You understand? But the most recent cause of flooding in Meduguri is attributed to the overflow or the breaking of the dam, the Alo Dam. dam. Hmm. Yes. And we can see the impact. Almost half a million people have been displaced. Yeah. Almost half a million people have been displaced. Now, this singular act cannot be um, cannot be with me attributed to um, human settlement activity. It is attributed or attributable to the dam overflowing its bounds. Now, we tend to look at flooding and flooding issues within this country, I think, within the context of our boundaries. But sometimes the effects and the start off begins from outside our borders. Mm. We have neighboring countries that have dams. We have neighboring countries that have increase in rainfall, mm -hmm. decrease in ground cover. And when these rains begin, the rain always finds its way. It flows down. It doesn't flow uphill. uphill. It follows gravity. It flows down, 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 down. And that is where we are having issues. Because recently, I've even seen this morning, a flood warning from Cameroon, Cameroon saying that yes, they are going to release the, yes, yeah. the Lag Lagdo Dam, I think yes, is the name of that dam. Cameroon yeah. is upwind, of its uphill of Nigeria. It's, so once they release the waters, what happens in other incidents of flood? Do you understand? Yes. Okay, so mitigating these, these, these floods, we need to be a little bit more proactive as citizens also. You understand? We need education on how to avoid a lot of these incidences. Each, each dam that is built usually has a dam spill off or a spillway 
where excess waters are released and they can follow and they flow away safely. We have, I think, with, with human settlement development, we have blocked a lot of these channels. Hmm. And that is one of the reasons why we have the situation that we have in Medukuri. And if you notice, um, I've just read, I just finished reading an article a couple of weeks ago. 31 out of the 36 states and FCT, 31 of Nigerian states have been put on the flood alert system. It means a flood can occur anywhere, anytime in those states. 31. That's too much. That's too much. That's really, too much. That's too much indeed. That's too much. So let us look at um, as a town planner. Yes. Um, is it that um, you know proper planning mm -hmm. in various towns were not done well because we have um, structures on underways. We have structures on you know places that are not even you know those structures are not supposed to be there in the first place. Yes. Well, it's not. Um, let me let me go back a little bit. You know the introduction of formal town planning. I don't think it can predate maybe 50 years, 40 to 50 years maximum. Okay. You understand? Yes. What we used to have were settlements that were formed in certain orders back in the day. Hmm. Building around the chief's palace, building around the central square, building around maybe farmlands, hmm. you know, hmm. that kind of thing, market square. Now, with the introduction of formal planning and education in planning, we realized that there's need to zone development, there's need to um, um, increase greening or ground cover on developed areas, there is need to move away from um, drainage or river, 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 what do you call it, river banks or mm -hmm, river mm -hmm. pathways, mm -hmm. away from them. Mm -hmm. There is need to introduce formal drainage and sewage systems okay that's to allow the free flow of water but there is also need to invest in solid waste management proper disposal of solid waste if you check all our drainages in many cities in this nation they are blocked yes they are with dirt, nylon unbelievable yes. what unbelievable what you can see in our drainages so you can imagine if we just took the time as citizens to clean those drainages. We can't always wait for the government yes. to do everything. Yes. Civic responsibility. We need to go there. The citizens, the professionals, people like us, the town planners, and others in the built environment, we need to also educate our people. These are the effects of improper disposal of waste, these are the effects of building on waterways. These are the effects of uncontrolled deforestation and removal of ground cover. If we have greens, we, cr we create carbon sinks and we also create um, pockets of, of, of um, green, what, how, how can I describe this, that allows water saturation into the soil. So topsoil is no longer, you know, because with the advent of development and pavement, we are now unable to allow water to sink. Water does not sink into the ground level. It needs to find somewhere where it can sink into the soil. So we need more of these green areas, more of trees to try and combat the effects of climate change first, which leads to also flooding. That's why we're in this very tough situation mm. now. It's not as if it's something that is out of control. No. We actually have the resources to rearrange and reorganize and re-educate ourselves. Okay, so coming to rearrangement, I've had some questions people ask. Yes. What, what happens to, you know, um, areas where the structures are already there? You know, they have lived there for, you know, a very long time that is their private part, um, properties and is a well-developed 
area yes. so to say we don't yes. even know if a town planner was consulted to have all of that yes so now questions are being asked people are asking okay so when you have uh, those kind of structures around us is it that you go there to demolish too because you you spoke about rearrangement Me, you cannot in unless it is for overriding public interest and safety okay you cannot go about demolishing people's property demolitions are not just done so easily mm. no it takes a lot of consideration and a lot of back and forth and a lot of involvement of the property owners if you see demolitions taking place i promise you there has been a lot of back and forth behind the scenes now I between you and i if i were to build an waterway and then tomorrow i wake up in the night and i'll find that water has gone halfway to my house really truly do i need to be told not to come back mm -hmm. We don't, we don't have the swimming culture. Man, who can swim against flood waters? Hardly anybody. True. There is nowhere you can go now that you will not find some semblance of overflow of water. Now, it can be, it, it can be controlled and mitigated. How? I think the first thing is, amongst where we live now, we don't have formal drainages. If the citizens can take it upon themselves to create formal drainages along their roads or access ways, just normal, maybe a meter deep, three quarters of a meter wide, that is enough to channel a lot of water. It is a first step towards helping ourselves. We plant one or two or three trees wherever we go. And we have anywhere we're doing, we're farming or anything, we don't remove all our vegetative cover. It helps absorption of water into the, into the ground. So before the floods become so, unless it is a terribly hard flash flood, as it is raining, it will absorb into the, it will sink into the ground and reduce the possibility and the advent of flooding. But we also need to, you know, if, have you ever seen any water body when it rains? Hmm. The amount of plastic pollution is unimaginable. Yes. yes. It's unimaginable. That is water carrying pollution from anywhere and everywhere and dumping into our riverbeds and streams. And they don't become, they are not cleaned up. So they become clogged. There's, it has nowhere to go. It will overflow. So people that, it, you know, it's not only in Nigeria that people live along, along riverbeds and, and drainage ways or water channels. You understand? But with proper education, that's why I said with proper education from planners and, and other professionals in the built environment, we can encourage people to um, imbibe practices that make their habitation safer, that make the environment more habitable, more friendly, that makes it more receptive and able to control or reduce to a certain degree the advent of these flooding events. Climate change is almost certainly here to stay unless and until we take positive means and measures to mitigate the effects. So you are saying Nigerians should accept the fact that the climate has changed but of course so we should prepare for if possible for the coming years okay so let me tell apart from flooding you know climate change does not only um, manifest in flooding mm -hmm. we have droughts mm -hmm. we have increases in temperature mm -hmm. we have all manner of fluctuations in climate and weather okay so if we if we imbibe like in Meiduguri for example it is we do agree that it is bordered by a lot of Sahara or desert, mm -hmm. desert land. Mm -hmm. If you were to plant trees, controlled, not uncontrolled okay. planting, controlled planting. Okay, so what do you mean by controlled planting? Thank you. Now, if you were to, medically is arid, for lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. So when you come to plant a tree, a tree needs water to grow. Yes. I have seen somewhere in Tanzania, where they have a practice of planting a group of trees in either a circular or an oval or a triangular method mm. that traps water. 
So they will plant those trees and then they will burn it. And they call it burning. They will add a higher level of soil around it to protect it, protect the roots and the plants from the trees. Okay. But you will also trap water. So you get plants that, are, that can survive without too much water, but that are also able to have deep roots that can tap into the waterbed. And slowly but surely they have changed almost getting to like a hundred kilometer radius. They have greened it. Mm. This helps us to have carbon sinks. Okay. Carbon sinks now help us to absorb carbon monoxide okay. and release, sorry, carbon dioxide okay. in the atmosphere and mm. then release oxygen, which in the same effect now cools the, 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 atmosphere. the atmosphere. Yes. Wow. Okay, so um, you're advocating for, um, you know, the planting of proper trees. Yes. And I love the explanation you just gave because a lot of people don't even, you know, oh, yes, they believe, oh, green area, green area, they, they understand what green area entails. But now you have been able to, you know, elaborate um, that particular um, um, topic yes. with us because flooding is something that is sweeping yes. almost most places in Nigeria and it's so alarming because structures are gone, lives are being lost, people are trapped, people don't even know where to see some of their family members at the moment. Thank you so much Tamplana Miro for that. So we're going to take a short break. When we come back we'll talk about the possible solutions before we wrap up. Okay. So viewers let's go on a short break. We'll be back. Get credible and authentic housing news at your fingertips by downloading the Housing TV mobile app. You can also join the African International Housing Show live from across the globe through the Housing TV mobile app. The mobile app features live streaming and trending housing news. You can locate the AIHS venue via the app, network with AIHS season speakers and live chat with exhibitors. You can also other house or building materials at AIHS via this app. Download the Housing TV mobile app now from the App Store and Google Play Store. And don't forget to click on the notification button. Available for both iOS and Android users. Housing TV is also on Star Times Channel 149 Decoder. Okay, welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is the Good Morning Africa Show and Housing TV Africa. Still in the studio with Town Planner Meru Danladi, FNITP. We're discussing flood control. We're um, looking at um, proper planning measures and solutions to mitigate flooding in major cities. So, Town Planner Meru, let's look at um, the possible solutions. Um, educate the viewers as individuals now before we you know go to um, the other as the other aspect how can individuals bring in their own contribution in mitigating um, the flood issues okay so as I said earlier the first thing we need to do I think it begins with us as professionals is to educate people to the negative effects of planned and unplanned activities everything has has a repercussion or a result you build on a road you block the road and it has an effect mm. you understand yeah. so the first thing to do is to try as much as possible to keep keep your circulation open and standard make your road standard make sure you have drainages in front of your homes you know, it is not easy in this economy, but we are so used to dishing out money and giving people. I remember the days of environmental sanitation. We used to come out and work. Yeah. Clean everywhere, mm -hmm. sweep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. And in the process, we were maintaining drainages, maintaining places that didn't have drainages. They would dig True. and then put some, some form of block work or True. something. Roads that were, were not well paved or there was no pavement. The boys, the young boys, even some young girls mm -hmm. would they come happily out, yeah. carry soil mm -hmm. and compact it just to make things. We need to go back to those days. It's very important. We need to understand also that there are trees that we should plant and trees that are virtually almost useless. Let me give you an example. We need trees that are proper shade trees that can spread out. Mm. 
sometimes we plant yeah it's, it's better than nothing you know all these ornamental trees that look nice palms i'm not saying they're not good but we can do we can go one step better okay indigenous deciduous trees big big trees baobab or neem trees or dogonyagoro or whatever i don't know their botanical mm. names those trees that are indigenous to the country okay to the land they grow they spread and they they they, they provide shade for farm animals for homes but they also you know, okay if you have a window and you open your window and you have a shade you know that your the quality fresh air that comes is in is unimaginable so you can imagine if any and every house has some sort of a plant we're automatically greening we as citizens also need to run away from anywhere that they are telling us hey i it's near the river but it, 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 there's no problem now the land is buildable <laughs> no don't run away anything that's more than that's less than 20 meters away from a river band walk away from it mm. take your money elsewhere you may not get something as big or as good as what you think you are trying to buy but in in, in the long run it is safer for you as an individual walk away from anywhere that has the potential or the possibility of having such a negative effect. There is no, no state in this nation now that has not had people mm -hmm. that have had issues with flooding. I have seen in places where, where people live is directly behind a landfill. Why would you do that to yourself? Automatically your quality of life and everything has reduced. And the landfill is not being sorted. Yeah. We're not sorting out the plastic. We're not sorting paper. Mm -hmm. We're not sorting metals. We're not sorting organic content. If we were to even sort our plastic or our waste from home, which is why I'm always thinking on education, for whatever waste we could produce from home, put your plastic aside, put your paper aside, put your metals aside, you're organic in one place, you automatically compost the organic, you spread it on gardens or farmland, it goes back to the environment and we grow. And those that are more difficult to process for the environment because like a piece of plastic can take a thousand years to degrade, of it will not course. degrade. Of course. But if we don't educate ourselves and let people know this is the reason why you need to keep your environment clean, take control of your waste and waste production, take control of, of circulation, take control of how you build your homes and your building materials, use things that are friendly and safe, make sure you have clean and open drainages, encourage yourself to plant a garden and plant a tree and do this. You know, people will not understand that that is the way to go. It may seem little, mm. but you can imagine if it is a collective effort everywhere we go all across the states in this nation there are those states that are prone to gully er erosion like enugu in the states in the south i think enugu and imo i'm not sure which of the southeastern mm -hmm. states they are prone to gully erosion the far northern states desertification those within the center like nasarawa and co we have so much issue with um, um un uncontrolled flooding But once people have the basic knowledge, organize your homes in a way you can do. You want to build, okay, build, but make sure you have strong, sturdy foundation. Build it a little bit higher, like a foot higher or more. Mm. It, if rain comes, before it, it becomes too damaging, it may have flowed past. But upon building within a depression, you also build with a very weak foundation and substandard materials, you understand? So many, a combination of so many factors. So many factors. True that, a combination of so many factors. So, um, Tom Plan and Meru, before we wrap it up on the Good Morning Africa show today, let's look at uh, the roles of town planners in, um, you know, educating people concerning um, flooding and what they should do better. And then also in terms of um, planning a city, just in summary. Okay, so um, the town planners are, are not just limited to physical planning. I just want to yep. oh, make you understand. Okay. No, 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 no. The, the town planning profession is so versatile. The town planner is necessary anywhere and everywhere. In security, in health, in agriculture, in economy. You name it. You understand? But we're trying as much as possible to focus on 
creating sustainable cities to encourage people to produce and to consume sustainably to encourage people to develop in a controlled and a sustainable manner that is the first thing that a town planner will try to make you we try to order activities mm. within the city for optimal use okay. so that within years you don't have too much of a conflict of uses within cities and within peripheral settlements also mm. all right uh, okay Town Planner Miru has done justice to um, this topic and uh, we really hope that um, our viewer there has learned one or two. It is a collective effort. We need to come together to, you know, put in our best to make sure that um, the flooding does not take over our cities and our town. And I love what you made mention of going back in those days where we used to have our normal Saturdays. I think it's always the last Saturday, last of, Saturday month. of the month. Yes for um, sanitation people come out really but now we've lost that over time so we urge um, communities cities towns to you know have that communal togetherness to clean their environment and make it safe clean and sound um, for or to dry flooding anyway thank you so much town planner Miro Danda the FNITP for coming on um, the Good Morning Africa show. We're still going to bring you here again <laughs> so you can enlighten and educate us. Thank you so much. So on this note, we'll call it a wrap on the Good Morning Africa show on Housing TV Africa. Thank you so much for watching. You can watch this episode and subsequent episodes by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Housing TV Africa. You can also follow us on all social media platforms at Housing TV Africa. And you can also download um, the Housing TV Africa mobile app on Google Play Store. And Apple Store. Thank you so much for watching. I am Yemen Abagudu. Have a great day and bye for now.